try to work on uh, laying out the actual ribs on this piece of plywood. Now that we've kind of gone through the lofting process and tweaked the uh, measurements, show you a little fail first. One of these is actually a temporary former. I'm calling F3. It goes right here and does not stay in the boat. So I thought, why not save some money, take some scrap plywood, and uh, you know, reuse it if I ever make the same boat again. <clears throat> and I was going to build uh, the, the sides, but look how crooked it is. And that might not subtract too much from the overall width, but in terms of positioning this thing correctly in place, I think that's just a bad bet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, don't have any other suitable scrap wood. I'm going to go ahead and lay out an F3 along with uh, the other ribs. Then I got a center line that will become a key reference for us in reflecting these measurements out. And the tricky thing is the basic shape of each of these ribs, they're only two and a quarter inches wide, could nest, but it's not a perfect fit. So we'll see how efficient a use of this piece of plywood we can actually make. Notice listening to some really fun YouTubes, people building things that there's a lot of people have totally switched over to metric and I just can't get the hang of that. I'm sorry. So I'm still imperial. I noticed in the UK a lot of people will use feet and inches until they get under one inch and then they'll switch to millimeters. Maybe I could someday learn to do that, but not yet. F3. Now the question is how most efficiently to nest the next one in there. We want to just barely get R2 to fit down inside R4. We do in fact have to come up that high. And um, the next guy would be R1 and that's certainly no better. I think we can get R1 inside of R2 and then we'll have to do the transit maybe down on the end. And that'll leave some eight foot strips for the keels and, and some bits in the middle for the dagger board trunk, I'm thinking. So uh, we will proceed on that plan. Uh, rather than getting a reference line and then adding that to the chine, you know, taking the chine me measurement there, I'm trying to stack these things to make the most efficient use out of this sheet of plywood. And so the measurements to the chine, to the shear, for all of these things had to be translated to some dynamic factor. So it's just tremendous opportunities for mental mistakes and I made most of them. So that means we got to lay out the transom and then we can cut these things out and then get to putting them up onto the strong back. Shear one foot six times two. Uh, <clears throat> so you're looking at, you know, you need three feet of run. We could do it this way, across the end of the piece of plywood but this is a natural wood finished boat right so we're going to see this grain and so choosing um, what what kind of wood we want to see here is important uh, this is the back side it's got it's still pretty this birch plywood I think is beautiful uh, but it's got more uh, you know little bits of knots and things so this is the pretty side this is the A side and I don't know that I want that little dark spot in the middle uh, of the transom, let alone if I was to shift it over asymmetrically. So I think what I want to do is take the transom this way, ready to start cutting out this plywood and for the first time making something that will be part of the boat. to design and build a boat. I love woodworking and I love uh, sailing and being able to uh, put them together even for a kit built boat would be really fun but something about taking an idea from uh, you know sketching what the boat might look like and tweaking it around and thinking about the features you want and then seeing and so here you know here's our one and it's just fun thinking, well, you know, maybe someday if things work out, this will be out on the water and we'll be having tons of fun and adventures. 
with this part going out into out into the lakes and uh, even maybe the ocean. too late. This is the bottom of uh, the boat at R1. You look here and try to imagine the shape of the boat at R1. The uh, bottom piece of plywood does a tremendous twist right across there. It's almost maybe 30 degree angle and you can see by the time it gets here to R1 it's almost 45 but by the time it gets here, it's nearly vertical. So, <clears throat> what I found is, as I was, and it also has a curve, the, the, the bottom lays down across this curved shape here. So what I found is that it wanted to have a slight radius over top of R1 at that point. And I had to retrofit that uh, by putting a one by and, and planing down that curve with a gap. <clears throat> So I'm going to see if I can actually anticipate that, and I'm taking just a bit of a guess at the radius, but here's how I want to do it. What try to do with this little shop is try to make the space as flexible as possible without one of the things that that means as well as budget-wise is not having a lot of huge high-end tools, and this bandsaw is just barely good enough for what I need it for. Uh, we'll see if it's successful, uh, but we won't really know that until we try to position it all in the strong back and start running lines. But I think it's good. Uh, I've got some scaffolding from uh, the boat that I built similar to this. And uh, one of the things we need to do is just put these temporary stiffeners across the top. Uh, it's not so much that they they need strengthened laterally. These are pretty stiff. But uh, having this across the middle means that we have something to fasten the thing to besides just the rib. And that becomes really important as we see. So before we start putting those on, I realized I kind of need this space down here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the grind. Most of the stuff I've already moved my drill press and, and uh, vise down under the table. Go ahead and clear up some more space for the shots and stow this away.
So that gives a little bit more room to spread out and work, which is good. Let's get started with cleaning up those interior edges. Start by just sort of using the block planer. The nice thing here is you can hear it differentially contacting the wood. It's actually pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Well, let's see what that looks like when we run a finish sander over it. There we go. We've cleaned up the interiors of the ribs. All right, let's do R1. We need to trim this brace, figure out where to put it, and make it exactly parallel so it's a useful uh, reference point for a level on the strong back. We want it uh, down a little bit from the shear because we're going to be cutting in the one buys that run along the shear. We don't want it in the way. We want it far enough up from the bottom uh, to provide a useful reference point. So we'll just take a, use it, snugging this up against the level as a reference. I will come down three inches, mark a line. There's a, a center line from the last boat, so we can try to reuse that. Plywood. And these holes, you may be thinking, well, that's going to create holes, right, for the uh, people to see. But we can fill them as we fill many such holes before the boat's done. All right. So there's our brace on our one. There's our two with the brace. All right, there's F3 with a brace. All right, there's our cross braces in. Now, I'm gonna figure out how to put these on the strong back. So here's our reference line, and as I've been telling you, uh, I built a similar boat for friends of mine, and I've saved the scaffolding. Uh, it's not identical. The, the lines are slightly different. Uh, but this one was the, the piece I built to hold up R1 before. And I've got uh, the 2x4s. I'm going to save this wood, of course. Because um, even construction lumber is getting pretty expensive. Obviously, that's going to be different than how I used the scaffolding on the previous boat. No problem to cut off the tops of those 2x4s again. One screw in. rib on the strong back. That should be a good start because if we did it right this. So let's let's commit. lead in here which we're going to have to adjust down to the proper uh, height of the rib perfect kick it look buddy you want to sail on the boat when it's done <laughs> R1 
Look down the center line. It looks good. All right, there's uh, F3.